Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm just working on getting some things harvested. I'm mainly focusing on the area that I seeded July 25th, which was 58 days ago. Things are doing phenomenally well out here. It's been really hot and it was really hot when I seeded everything. So they came up super fast and they started to grow really quickly. So I just wanted to give you an update of this area and then get some things harvested. And then I do think I'm gonna harvest some peppers in another section of the garden and then go around and harvest whatever strawberries I can find. So quick overview, we've got the sweetness corn here, which is like little tiny itty bitty corn. Like the shortest corn you've ever seen. And I don't think it's quite ready. I think, I mean, it's starting to form. You can see these little ears of corn here. Some are a little bit bigger. And I think we'll get some, but not for maybe a couple weeks yet, which is okay. Our forecast is looking pretty good. Then we've got uh, snow peas, we've got beets, we've got beans. There's some cilantro that's bolting, basil, lots of carrots all the way to here. I just recently thinned those out actually. So I'm not sure, I might just harvest a few. This is a row of cucumbers which got completely ravaged in our windstorm a couple weeks ago, but they are since then. I mean, you can see all the tattered, but they're starting to push new and look fresher on the ends. And I do think we're gonna find some monster. Like these are supposed to be pickling cucumbers. <laughs> these are like the monster pickles. Anyway, the chickens are gonna benefit from some of the harvest today. And then the last bit over here, we've got Zucchini, which I just harvested some great big ones day before yesterday. Gave them to the chickens already. And then there's parsley there on the end. And then these were all the flowers that were seeded not long before these vegetables. Morning Glory's got a little bit hit in one of our 39 degree nights. A little bit sad, but everything else is looking so beautiful. The Tango Cosmos. There's a bunch of different sunflowers and zinnias. More Morning Glories there. That whole uh, trellising system fell over twice in two different windstorms. Super heavy to get staked back up, but we did it. More cosmos here. Beautiful calendulas. What? What's going on here? <laughs> Russell, you look like a rabbit. What are you doing? This is called flashback mix. Not the most gorgeous mix of color. Then we've got the petite marigolds, and then really the only flower crop that, well, no, one of two flower crops that didn't do very well. Nasturtiums, I over soaked those seeds, kind of knew better. We've got bachelor's buttons right here, looking beautiful. Look at these, buds everywhere. Oh, these little short ones, these are the teddy bear sunflowers. And then we've got sunspots right here which have enormous flowers for how short they stay. And then we've got the Tithonias, the Mexican sunflowers, which you guys were all right. They got massive, taller than me. And the last flower crop I seeded was amaranth, which I only got one out of this entire fence line. I learned though, I learned something this year about amaranth. But look at that, still producing beautiful flowers which that was the goal, so we know it can be done as long as you get the seed started right. But just look down here. I mean, we've just got peas and just beautiful produce everywhere. And here's some of the beans. And the beans are just starting. I don't know how many I'm gonna actually get. Here's some that look a little bit further along. There's probably a lot more than I can even see right now, but I would rather get them when they're a little young and more tender. Some gorgeous cucumbers. So yeah, I brought out my kneeling pad, some bowls, a basket, my pruners. I'm not really sure what we're gonna end up with, but I think it's gonna be fun. Um, and so what I think I'll do is just set up the camera and maybe we'll stop between each different variety and we'll show you what we got. And that sums up my supplies right there. Kneeling pad, my basket, the red bowl is probably gonna be the chicken bowl, I'm guessing. We'll put all of the oversized, like overgrown stuff in there. And then pruners, which I may or may not need. The peppers are over there, and then most of the strawberries I want are in the interior garden. All right, so let's get after this. I'm basically just trying to get as much picked before Benjamin gets up from his nap. Here's
here's the first two types of things, starting with zucchini, which I have pulled, oh, probably 25, 30, maybe even more zucchini off these plants already. Um, and then I've also pulled some huge ones to give to the chickens. So they are being, like they're growing prolifically and producing prolifically. So if I can get a hold of them, like little, like this, that's actually what I prefer. They're just so much more firm. And then we've got three types of cucumbers, which also have been harvesting a few, but there's a ton of babies all over the plant. So we've got the Suya Longs or Suya Nishikis, which I love these because they don't have a very uh, pulpy center. They're really firm all the way throughout, but you can see they're more spiny than like these right here. More spiny and curved, which makes them a little harder to cut, but they're super good. These are the Telegraph, which are an English type cucumber ton of babies on this plant in particular but we got some really good ones right here and honestly like we can't eat this many cucumbers all at one time so I'm kind of glad that they're coming off kind of how they are and then the pickling cucumbers already picked a whole bunch of these this is the size I prefer right here like this is the perfect size of pickle uh, these have gotten a little bit big still look pretty good so I'm gonna try to pick these things in order of what I think will hold up in the warmth out here I might run and put all of these as I pick them in a shady spot. It's only like 68 degrees right now. It's supposed to get 76, so it's not too bad. Beautiful day. I think I'm gonna take after the beets next. All right, we've got a few beets and carrots. On the left, we've got Detroit Goldens, which look really nice. There's quite a number of them that had nice size, which I was surprised because I haven't thinned the beets at all. And then there's the Bull's Blood beets right there. Not as many of those ready. And then we've got Nancy's Carrots, which so yummy when they're this size. They're so sweet. And then these are Parisian Carrots, which are actually meant to be small like this. They are so nice because they're a really good snacking carrot, but they're also easy to cook with because you barely have to do anything to prep these. You just cut the tops and the root off, clean them up, and then toss them in because they're usually just about the right size. No extra cutting required. But I also want to show you how many carrots and beets are still left in the ground because I'm basically still in the process of thinning these. I mean, I came through and thinned the carrots lightly one time this last week, actually. Was it this last week? I think I waited way too long and I haven't given these much room to grow. So I've been strategic. Every time I pick anything out of here, I'm trying to pick to leave room enough for the other ones to grow. Uh, the beets I haven't thinned at all. And that's why I think I don't have as many that are bulbed up, but they are a longer, maturity day than some of these carrots. But honestly, these root crops, they do great even in cold temperatures and it really improves their flavor sometimes too. It helps intensify the sugars. So sometimes I'm harvesting carrots all the way through the winter, depending on how our winter goes. So you can still see all of the carrots I have left, which is awesome. It means I'll just have that many more to keep harvesting throughout this fall and winter. And then the beets, it almost looks like I haven't even harvested any. They're still so thick, like I honestly should probably just thin them out even though some of them aren't ready. I should go in and leave room, extra room for some of them to get bigger. And I've got a little pile of greens and stuff to give to the chickens. So the last couple of things are the beans and the peas and I do think I'm gonna inspect this corn. Even if there are some small ears semi-ready, I might pick them. Well, I ended up with quite a few peas. I mean, that's a pretty good amount. I'll be able to use these for a couple of stir fries I have in mind for this week, and then I will probably freeze the rest. Uh, but the only variety that's bearing right now are the organ sugar pods, which start here at the beginning and then go to about right here. I'll show you closer in a second. Um, and most of them, like a lot of them are just still babies. I mean, they're just starting to bear. This is my first harvest today off of the peas. And the early gray sugar peas, start right here. You can see where the bloom color changes. 
So Oregon sugar pods bloom with the white bloom and the early gray sugars bloom with the pink bloom. And this whole variety, like this whole rest of the row, they're not bearing yet. There's not a single pea, not a baby pea, lots of blooms. So those will just be one that we harvest a little bit later. And I didn't anticipate that. I thought that both varieties would have peas on them today. So I'm really happy with that bowl full. And the progress number nine peas, which hardly came up, I wouldn't even bother growing them. I feel like, I mean, they have some peas on them. I tried them and they are not tasty at all. I'd had those seeds for years and years, so I don't feel like it's a very fair assessment to say like the poor germination um, because I've had them for so long. I just popped them in the ground because I still had the seed, uh, but honestly don't really love the flavor. Out of all the pea varieties that I've tried throughout the years, the Oregon sugar pods have always been my favorite. So now we're just gonna take after the beans, which I think there are quite a few. I don't know, until we get into it, and then we'll head up to the peppers. All right, guys. <laughs> so I'm only about a foot in to the first row, about that far. I almost have a full bowl, and I still have this whole row to the beets, and this whole row. This is gonna take me a while. Goodness, look at all of these beans. The whole basket is full of them. And I honestly just got to a point where I just thought this is all the beans I can deal with. So I'll fill up this basket and then I'll deal with these, get them either frozen or whatever, canned, and then I'll come out and pick the rest. And there's a whole bunch of baby beans still on the vine. So I think if I just keep picking, I'll be able to pick until a frost takes them. So now peppers and maybe strawberries, we'll see. Everything that I picked today, all in one spot. Isn't that a beautiful trailer load right there? Now I do have a sneaking suspicion that somebody visited the strawberries before I did because I just looked at them like maybe day before yesterday and there were a ton. That's why I went in to get this bowl because I thought surely I can fill this bowl like kind of mounded even with strawberries. Oh well. I've been kind of harvesting in small batches the strawberries throughout the season and freezing them. So I have a mounded cookie sheet in our freezer full of strawberries. I'll just add this to the lot. So I guess let's start here up in the front corner. We've got the zucchini and some leaves of the beets that I'm going to give the chickens there at the bottom of the bowl. We've got the carrots there. Our bowl of snow peas. Bell peppers. Now our bell peppers have been amazing this year. I don't know what the deal is because some years I have good luck with them, some years I don't, but most of the time they are fairly thinned wall. These feel really substantial. Like they have a heft, a weight to them. So that is really exciting to me. I went ahead and just picked one cantaloupe and one watermelon. I have a lot of both of these out there, but we can only really, you know, eat one at a time. So this one looked pretty good. Let's see. See if I can roll it. Yeah, there was a little spot on the bottom. I don't know, it's been out there for so long. It's gotta be ripe. And there's our beets, which this will be plenty for a batch of pickled beets, which is really, I like roasted beets and pickled beets. That's pretty much it. And our cucumbers up here, our strawberries, and then three other varieties of peppers. So I've got jalapuegos right here, which are to me a little bit hotter than traditional jalapenos, are really good. These are called a baby chocolate. So they're like little mini sweet bell peppers and they turn this chocolate color when they're ripe. I think they're really interesting. And then these are the hot and heavy peppers, which they usually turn all the way red when they are ripe, but they're pretty close. Like that's, that's pretty darn close. Oh, <laughs> can't forget the beans. Holy moly, 
talk about a bean harvest. I have my work cut out for me here, you guys. Just seeing all of this stuff, knowing it's just one day's worth of harvest, knowing that I harvested stuff prior to today and I'm harvesting more later, just kind of goes to show how worth it it is to get out in the middle of the summer. I know it's so hot and it's like the last thing you wanna do is replant a garden, um, but you really do, I don't know, it's so worth it to me to be able to harvest all of this uh, fresh stuff over again. And in the fall, like right now, I feel like I have more time to put stuff up, to get my canning equipment out if I want to, or to get the dehydrators out or whatever. Uh, because when I'm harvesting, you know, early and midsummer, there's so much, so many other things to attend to, so many things to keep watered, so many weeds to keep on top of, that I don't have that kind of time. So it's kind of a perfect garden to plant really for a, the goal of preserving. Not that I'm necessarily gonna be preserving a lot of this stuff. I mean, the cucumbers will eat um, fresh, whatever we don't eat, the chickens will get. Uh, the strawberries I will freeze. These I will probably blanch and freeze. We'll eat some fresh as well. Um, we will eat the zucchini. I might shred a few of them up to freeze. Carrots will eat fresh. Peas will most likely eat those fresh. I love peas. Uh, the peppers I might dice up and freeze. These will eat fresh. These I will can. So that's kind of the, the plan for this stuff. And the way that we've treated all of this produce in terms of fertilizer and care, um, most of it, except for some of the strawberries, came from the new property. Uh, when I planted everything, I amended the area lightly with land and sea compost and biotone starter fertilizer, and that is it. That is all that these crops got. Um, that ground up there is way better than I thought, and I think it's just because it laid fallow or undisturbed for so long. Um, and then, you know, there were dryland grasses and things that would come up, die back, come up, die back, and I'm sure that those were just replenishing the soil throughout the years. And even though the soil looks bad, like it's white, it's powdery, things just are doing pretty good up there, and I'm so, so thankful for that. So I never did any follow-up repeat application of fertilizer on anything, any of these things. The only thing that got fertilizer more than once were the dahlias that I planted up there. We gave them a midsummer feed of flower tone because they just kind of came up and then they looked like they were stunted and I really wanted blooms off of those. But in terms of vegetables, that's all they got was the beginning stuff and then just consistent water. So anyway, that is gonna be it for today. I gotta go around and get some things watered and I don't think Benjamin's actually napping. I've been checking in um, on him periodically and I can hear him playing at the moment. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.